السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين وعلمنا ما ينفعنا يا أرحم الراحمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today, inshallah, we will uh, uh, go on where we uh, stopped last time on Ayah 77. And inshallah, we will be finishing Surah Yasin, inshallah. Bismillah rahman rahim uh, We saw last time how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, counseled Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he uh, uh, assured him that let not their speech grieve you, ya uh, Prophet Muhammad, ya Muhammad. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything, what they conceal and, and when, what they declare. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to pay attention to their words. So uh, then he reminds people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, does not man know that we have created him from a mere sperm drop? Yet he stands forth as a clear opponent. So now if we compare this ayah with ayah 71 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says What's the difference? There haven't they seen what we have created for them. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is specifying So he is Allah is say, specifying this particular ayah for the human being, for man. Haven't, haven't you seen what we have created you from? Don't you know that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everybody and he is the only creator. Nobody can claim that he created a human being. So how would this be? If, if someone comes and say, this is my car, and he is not. So the owner, the real owner would say, no, this is mine. And he will show him the deed and he will show him the ownership. And but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانُ أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَا Nobody could say, no, you did not create man. I created man. Nobody. So he is the only, the only creator for man. When, so what did he create man from? From al mani So uh, al mani is the sperm that the, the liquid that the uh, sperm lives in. And the sperm drop is the one that goes to the egg and uh, um, get it fertilized. Then there will be a fetus. From this fetus will have uh, all, all, all organs. Imagine, imagine now that the, the baby will have muscles. What type of muscles? Different muscles. The round, the, sh the long, the small, the, he will have bones, the long, the uh, soft, and everything, nerves. So these are the things for the body itself. Now then there will be things for uh, such as let, let, let's say the the mind the mind that thinks 
the eye that will see, the tongue that will uh, speak, the tongue that will taste. So who created all of this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody could create anything. Even nobody could change anything in Allah's creation. So what will happen? Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, was uh, arguing uh, with the one who create who thought that he is uh, he can create things so he told him in the so the sun rises from the east just make it rise from the west and that person was uh, startled he couldn't of course so he couldn't change the uh, the, the thing that is already created. How would men think or claim that they can create anything? So when, when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man from this despicable drop, sperm drop, that person grew up and he had some good characters and some bad characters. So we have to think wisely to protect ourselves in the Akhir. We have to apply the narration of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu when he asked him, Ya Abu Huraira alayka bi husni al khuluq. You have to have good manners. And Sayyidina Abu Huraira asked him, What is husni al khuluq, Ya Rasulullah? Qal, an tu'ati man haramak wa ta'afu amman zalamak تعطي من حرمك وتعفو عن من ظلمك و I forgot the third one okay so we ha you have to forgive people and this would happen especially when you are angry وتعفو عن من ظلمك that's the third one so to give people to forgive people when they oppress you when they mistreat you to give those who deprive you and that's not, not easy. So when do the, the, does someone practice husn al When he is in a bad mood or when he is tested or when he is in a bad situation. At that time, he should practice husn al the good manners. Not when he is happy, when he is uh, relaxed, when he is taking it easy, when he is chilling. No. Husn al comes or is proof is a proof of having good relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's not easy to show or not to be angry when you have all the right to be angry so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding man awalam yara al-insanu anna khalaqnahu min nutfatin this is how he created uh, Allah, how, how Allah created man. فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ So what's, what, what is man doing? Man is a clear opponent. He is opposing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by, uh, by not following his orders by not thanking him for all the bounties that he has given him. And he is uh, an opponent to people when, when he should be good to them, he is not good to them. He's an opponent. So what does, what does a human being need to do? He need to be clear. 
He needs to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him. If, if a teacher understands everything in his curriculum that he is going to teach the, uh, the students, then he will do it very easily. And those students will be lucky to have him as a good teacher because he is doing a good job. He can make things clear for others because those things are clear for him. So as humans, as people living together, we have to understand each other. Most of the problems that happen between people are resulting from misunderstanding. He said this, oh, but he didn't mean this, but I understood it like this. Always try to look at uh, things from different points of views. Why? Because if someone really does not mean what, what you are thinking or what you understood, then you are, uh, you are being unjust to that person. We have to have clear understanding for each other. We have to understand the inner thoughts of our, ourselves first, so to be able to understand other people. We have to have sound heart to be able to receive other people soundly and correctly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on. وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us examples. But what happened? That man that was created from a sperm, that man forgot his origin, where he was created from, and how he was created. So if you want... Uh, uh, if you want to understand the word daraba in another way, the word daraba by itself means to hit something. Now, if you hit something that is stronger than your hand, then your hand will be in pain. You will feel a lot of pain in your hand. So what you create what you create is that what you do, what you hit should be lighter than what you are hitting with. So you have to give examples for people to understand what's going on. So Arafi'i says, I, I'm gonna read two, po two lines of poetry and I will explain them. These are very nice uh, uh, lines. Aya hazi an min sunu fil qadar. Bi nafsika ta'nu fula bil qadar. Waya dariban sakhratan bil asa. Darabta al asa. Am darabta al hajar. You who are mocking the uh, different tastes that you are having in life. You are not mocking them, but you are mocking yourself. And you who is hitting a, a big stone with a very light stick, did you hit the stone or did you hit your stick? So the idea of giving examples is just to give, to make things uh, closer to the to the minds of people so what we need to be focusing on here wadaraba lana mathalan wa nasiya khalqa this story this is just a story everything we say are stories everything we read are stories but we have to take the examples we have to take the lessons So the lesson that we can take is 
we have to understand each others. We have to give excuses for people. Sometimes people will say something to you, but it, that might be not suitable to hear, but put yourself in their shoes. Think, why did they say so? What made them say so? Why this happened? They might be having a bad day and suddenly a word slipped. Give excuses. Learn from the examples that you have around you. There are examples, learn from them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, presents so many examples in the Quran. One example is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zumar, ضرب الله مثلا فيه شركاء متشاكسون ورجلا سلما لرجل هل يستوون مثلا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives examples uh, to make things easy easier for us to understand and here the example he's saying uh, that if someone is working for several partners, but these partners uh, have disputes between them and they quarrel between them. So whoever this person who is working for them is going to please any of the partner, then the others will be upset with him. So this is the first example. The other one, Allah is saying, compare this person to a person who is working for, for one good uh, 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 landlord or good um, par, uh, person. So he will, he will be relaxed. So what is, what is it that we understand from this? This is an example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Working for so many partners and working for one. Worshipping Allah, the one, and associating other, other partners with him. Learn the lesson again. Don't follow any associate, don't associate anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Forget about your nafs. Forgive it. Forgive, forget about your ego. Forget about your desires. Forget about everything. Forget about shaitan. All of these are what will make you upset, what will make you not relaxed. You, you will be following this and that and this and that. You will be doing this and that. And then at the end, you will, rem you will see that all of these things will not lead you to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So follow him alone. Don't associate any partner to him. Make your intentions pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything he has given you. Thank him for the blessings of being a Muslim. Thank him for, for a blessing that he has chosen you out of millions and billions of people to serve others. Sometimes people will be helping with charities, with food, with doing this and with doing that. That's not something they powerfully did it, no. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, has allowed them, has chosen them to do, and what? You have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقًا قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيَ الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمًا So, he said, who will give life to these bones after they are, are rotten and they become dust? So Allah created man from a sperm 
then he grew up and he is a clear opponent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once Ubay bin Khalaf came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he had a piece of uh, um, bone with, with him. So he smashed it and he made it powder and he said, how would, who would uh, recreate this again? And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Allah will recreate it. He will recreate you and then he will throw you in hellfire. And this person, Ubay bin Khalaf, was the only person that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam killed himself by, by, by him. Sayyidina Muhammad killed only one person and it was Ubay bin Khalaf. So what was the answer? Say, Ya Muhammad, he will give life. Allah will give life to them who created them for the first time. And he is the all-knower of every creation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created these bonds. He, is, he will recreate them in the day after. It's normally easier if you have something that was deassembled, uh, it needs a screw here and it needs fixing here to put it back together. You didn't make it from the from uh, a scratch. You just put things together. So tell him, Ya Muhammad, tell this person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is going to recreate things and Creating things from the beginning, from a scratch, it is difficult. But recreating, you have the material. You're putting it back together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa huwa bi kulli khalqin alim. Allah knows everything. He knows all his creations. He knows what they did. He knows what they declare. And he knows what, what they kill, conceal. And he is the one who is going to uh, reward everyone or punish everyone according to their deeds. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Huwa bi kulli khalqin alim. Alladhi ja'ala lakum min al-shajari al-akhdari naran. Fa'idha antum minhu tuqidun. So he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, produced for you fire out of green trees. And from this fire, from, from these trees, you ignite, you, you're, you have light, you have everything. Now think a little bit. So if we can say, what's the fuel that we are? the wood of the trees. But what is the wood of the trees? It's, it's wet. Trees need water. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us light out of water. And remember that the, uh, the, the purest fuel we can get is from trees because it doesn't pollute uh, uh, the environment. And anything, any other fuel does pollute the, the environment. So imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most powerful, is creating fire from something that's so wet. That's from something that drinks a lot of water, that needs a lot of water. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on. أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْلُقَ مِثْلَهُمْ بَلَى وَهُوَ الْخَلَّاقُ الْعَلِيمُ So what's, what, what is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done? Isn't he who created the heavens and the earth? Isn't he able to create the like of them? 
Yes, indeed. He is the all-knowing, supreme creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and they will last till the day of, uh, of judgment. And the heavens with whatever in them, um, plan, planets, um, stars, everything, orbits, everything, each and everything in the sky goes in its orbit. Nothing changes. Nothing goes or oppresses another orbit. Allah has created the earth with everything that it contains. And he subjugated them, he subjugated all he has created for man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to create the like of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, creating the earth and the heavens is way much bigger thing than creating man. Look at the um, skies. Nothing is holding the skies. If you look at the solar system, you will see the earth. So the, uh, the earth is swimming. The earth is in its orbit with everything on it. This is a proof of Allah's power, the creator. So whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created serves the human, serves man. So everything that was created is a servant and man is the one who is served. Now let me ask a question. Have you ever seen a servant who, uh, who lives longer than the one who is serving? Have you ever seen a servant who lives longer life than anyone who, whom he is supposed to serve? So the skies, the earth, everything on them, these are servants for man and we know that people are born people die people are born people are die the skies and the earth never left the laws or the order that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them for the sun rises at a certain time it sets at a certain time all, all the stars in the skies, they have certain orbits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khalaqu al-alim, the all-knowing, the supreme creator. But look at man. Everything Allah created is following the order. But look at man. You people... The strong will you, of you will oppress the weak. You will be unjust to each other. What happens? Allah created and he knows everything and everyone. إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his command is only when he intends a thing, he says to it, be, and it is. Allah will just say be, and it will be. Now, you're sitting on your chair. Uh, your muscles are in a certain position. If you want to stand up, so your muscles should be in a different uh, position. So just intending to stand up 
you don't know which muscles are moving, which are not. Did you ask, did you give an order for your muscles just to, hey, wake up, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to stand up, stand with me? No. You don't give orders. You follow orders. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just if he, if he, anything he wants, he will just say, be, and it will be. But man cannot order. Why? I think we can start the answering this at our houses. A mom will give an order. Will everybody listen? No. Go and uh, a bigger circle. The mayor might give an order. Will everybody listen? No. He go on a bigger cir circle. So what happens? Man is not supposed to order as he will not be obeyed 100%. Now, let me ask you something. Go back to someone who is paralyzed. Can he give orders to his muscles and say, stand up, I want to, to walk, wake, walk away, I want to walk? No. But only Allah can give orders. He would do and nobody can question him. He would decree and nobody will, uh, will say yes or no. He would give orders and everyone should obey. So exalted is he. Glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one in whose hands is the realm of all things. And to him, everyone will return. This is an amazing ayah, and I hope the time will be enough just to explain this ayah. Okay, so let's start. In Surah Al Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tabarak al al Mulk. Blessed be, honored be, glorified be he in whose hand is the dominion. What does the word mulk mean? There are four stages of the word mulk, which starts with meme, uh, which has three letters, meme, lamb, calf, mulk. So let's start with malik. Malik is someone who owns anything, even if it's so trivial. I can say I have only one, one dress. Okay, so I am an owner. Malik, Malik is the owner to what, to who owns. The owner to who owns. So Malik is higher than Malik. Now, the, the third stage is Alam al-Mulk. Alam al-Mulk is owning whatever people can see. Now, the fourth one is Alam al-Malakut. Alam al-Malakut is to own what people cannot see. This is the realm of heavens. So, al-malakut is stronger than al-mulk. And al-mulk is stronger than al-malik. And al-malik is stronger than malik. So, al-malakut, the realm of heavens, is to all the things that you cannot see. And who owns that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Glory, glory Allah, glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has, who owns everything, whatever you see and whatever you don't see. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes give special secrets to people. But which people? The best of his servants. Good, good people. For example, you can say, oh, mashallah, this person has special futuh. There is something special about this person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this person special secrets that are not given to other people. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُورِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ We show Ibrahim the realm of heavens and earth. Why? Why would Allah give something special for, for some people? because they were tested and they succeeded in, this, in their tests. So why Ibrahim alayhi salam in particular? What, did, what was it for him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him in everything and he passed. So he tested him in his, when he was young, when he uh, destroyed the idols, and his people burnt him, put him in a huge fire. Allah saved him. Fire be safe for Ibrahim. Allah tested him when he was old, when he ordered him to slaughter his son, his own son that he was so long waited for. And he accepted Allah's order and he wanted to fulfill Allah's command. So he passed the, th the test. So a person who is a slave of Allah, but a true slave of Allah will be given something special. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give him some secrets. Now imagine, uh, go to Surah Al-Kahf. When Sayyidina Musa wanted to, uh, uh, to meet Al-Khadr alayhi salam, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe him with? أَتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا We had given mercy from us and had taught him from the divine knowledge. So the point is, Allah is the owner of everything. And he gives special secrets for people. One of the companions said, uh, Sayyidina Ali, عنه, I know the roads of heaven more than I know the roads on earth. These are, these are secrets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to certain people. So Allah has created man. He gave him orders. And then the ayah ends with two important words. You will be returned to him. This is a threat. This is a threatening to people. So for those who did not believe in the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now let these words make him, shake him to be ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create people just out of pleasure or just for nothing. No, people have a mission and people have duties to do, to fulfill, so they will be punished or rewarded when they go back to him. So when in Surah Al-Fatiha, we say, 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. This is the first surah in the Quran, in, uh, in the order of the Quran. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Think of your life. Think of the good things you have in your life. Stop thinking of the bad things. Stop thinking of the tests. Stop thinking of something that will make your heart not ready, not pure to receive the light. So, you will go back to him to see to see the results of your deeds. So you can see, so you can get the results of your tests. Each and every one who takes an exam, they will get a grade for that. So if they, if they uh, studied well, they will be happy. They will be rewarded. If not, then what will happen? They will fail and they will be miserable. Every soul will be compensated for what it earned. Every soul will be treated justly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anbiya, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ Every soul will taste death. And we test you with evil and good as a trial. And to us, you will be returned. And Sayyidina Omar says, مَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكْ فَلَا يَلُمَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسًا if you find good, then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you find other than that, then don't blame anyone except yourself. You did not obey. You went astray. You followed shaitan. You followed your nafs. You followed whatever any, whatever get, got you deviated from the, from the right path. This is our focus, Ya Allah. Get us connected to the right path. Get us connected to the one who show us the right path. Get us connected to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, if we have a look, an overview look of Surah Yasin, uh, we will see that from the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talked about the, the, the Habib al-Najjar when he died and what reward he found. And then he ended up with the, with the uh, frightening two words those two words are frightening for those who disobeyed Allah but they are very very promising for those who obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they know that no matter what tests they had in this life they, they will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will find their result, their reward there. And always remember that whenever, whatever happens, if you practice patience and rida and being content with what Allah has decreed, the result is so high. The reward is so high. Some, it's something that you cannot imagine you cannot think of that will be what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised his righteous slaves. 
with this, alhamdulillah, we come to the end of Surah Yasin. Inshallah, the next three weeks, we will be talking about Surah Al-Rahman, the following about Surah Al-Waqi'ah, and the last about Surah Al-Mulk. So inshallah, we will meet again next week. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka minhu abduka wa nabiyuka Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma sa'alaka minhu sayyiduna wa nabiyuna Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. نعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نسألك من الخير كله عاجله ما وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته